Welcome to Let's Talk with Teresa Ann. I am your host, and today is another Heavenly Wit Monday. For those of you who have never heard of my YouTube channel or my podcast, Let's Talk with Teresa Ann, Heavenly Wit Monday started really from my book, Heavenly Wit, which was released in March of 2020. And it's a book about seeing mission fields in the midst of our battlefields. But the only way we can do that is by seeing with God's holy perspective, seeing with grateful heart, our grateful hearts responding to who he is with great awe and wonder. So on today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the book of Colossians. It may seem like, what, really? No, really. This is good. This is good stuff. You want to know how to maintain your freedom in Christ. The book of Colossians is that book. And being that it's the 4th of July, beautiful, beautiful reminder of what we have in Christ Jesus. That is what's coming up next. So the book of Colossians is truly a guidebook to living a life that blesses God, blesses ourselves, and blesses others. It reveals this mystery. Have you ever tried to go and and solve a mystery? And there's so many people right now trying to find that secret to life. But I want to tell you today You don't have to look any further. Here is the mystery revealed. It's Christ Jesus living in us. This is what's amazing. Is Christ Jesus himself is the mystery revealed. He is the antidote to abundant life. The middle of life that seems to be riddled with decay. So listen, no more searching for it's Christ Jesus revealed. He's the one. He is the one that the ancients waited for. Ha, this is so amazing. The mystery is Christ in us. And that right there is the hope of glory. The ancients knew him as going before them. They knew him. They knew God as the one who guided them. You know, the fire by night and the cloud by day. But before Christ, they never knew the power of Christ that dwells within. Now that's powerful. Remember, Emmanuel is God with us. But the Holy Spirit is God within us. This book shows you how to pray in Praying is what? Responding to God with grateful heart. This book shows how to treat other people. This book shows in a more finite of relationships, how to treat your spouse, how to treat your children, how to treat your coworkers, how to treat those that you employ and beyond. So anyone who says there's no manual for doing this life, but there is. And of course, the Bible itself shows all of these many characters and all the things that they went through, the principles that you can learn. But one thing for sure is that through every single book, through every story, you get to see the character of God revealed most of all. If you haven't read this powerful book, I really encourage you to do so. But before you pick up that Bible and before you start reading, first say, Holy Spirit, be my teacher. I only want to learn this, not through my jaded perspective, not through my experiences or lack thereof, but I want to learn directly from you, the one who has the full picture and watch what will unfold. 
Now listen, this is what's amazing. In the book of Colossians, it's revealed that in Christ are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Not just any wisdom, not just any knowledge, but the wisdom and the knowledge of who God is. And yet, all the while, we as people are still looking outside of that and we wonder why we don't have answers that satisfy our soul. I love what my dad says. We can be saved, but not changed. We can be saved, but not transformed. So how do we become both? Because if we're not living a life of transformation, we're living a powerless life. And if you don't understand and you don't know that you have the Holy Spirit of God that dwells within you, what you don't know, you don't know. So I want to tell you today of what, when you say yes to Jesus, this empowerment of the Holy Spirit that comes in and dwells within us so that when we read the word, our souls, our mind, our will, and our emotions come alive and are transformed. We become new creations. We don't respond the way we used to. And even if we do, guess what? We're aware of it and we immediately repent with great conviction, not conviction of, oh, I can't believe you did it. But God, thank you that you allowed me to hear myself so that I could have freedom in you. It's never a voice of condemnation. It's this awe and wonder yet again that we get to actually be free and stay free. And when we hear ourselves doing the opposite of what God provided, we get to rejoice that we actually caught ourselves and go, wow, God, thank you for that provision of your Holy Spirit to convict me to change and to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. From the place of transformation is where behaviors finally change. Not behaviors changing because you learned how to behave well, but it's coming from a place of transformed heart. Now you begin to consider others when you maybe not, maybe you didn't used to, or maybe you did, but now it's to a whole nother level. It's not considering others for your own ego, but it's considering others because God loves them and you're responding to God's love over them. Big difference. So often we think that if we don't set boundaries within our lives with people that we're being rude. But here is what is so powerful about the word of God. The word of God, it's a beautiful instruction of how to set boundaries in God's love. It's not setting boundaries in, ooh, I'm better than you and you better do what I say or else you're off of this boat, so to speak. But here's what happens. A lot of times when we're going through hard times, we look around and we look for the Jonas in life. We look for those that are disobedient and then we're like, get them off the ship, get them off the ship. But here's what we have to remember is that it's not about looking for the Jonas in life and why we're not happy and why we're going through storms. But what it actually is, is looking to God and saying, God, what is in me that you want to get rid of in me? so that I can become more like you. It becomes this relationship where you're no longer looking at what others are doing that are wrong. Because let me tell you, we there, that's a long list. We could go for days. Actually, we could go for days to where we're so distracted from our relationship with God because we're focused on what everyone else is doing wrong. And that's a great seduction of the enemy himself. And so we can't fall for that ploy. But what we can do is say when hard times come, when we're dealing with difficult people, we say, God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that maybe I'm not to do life with those people, but just because I don't do life with them doesn't mean I don't still have a dialogue with you about them praying for them, hearing your heart for them, even if I never do life with them 
again. So I want to go back to the book of Colossians. This is what it looks like to love God and then love yourself and love others. It's out of a place of love and consideration, not out of a place of ego. Because if we hear any other message that says, get rid of them, because if they're not going to help you in your life, if they're not going to encourage you, if they're not going to make your life better, then get rid of them. That's a narcissistic way of thinking. That's a humanistic way of thinking. Again, it makes you look better. It makes you have this mindset that you're better than them. Now, you may act better than them, but they are covered in a clout of deception. And so for us to walk away and just walk away, that is negligent. But to walk away knowing, God, I can't help them, but you can. And so, Father, I was in their life and they were in my life for a reason. I don't know the full picture, but what I do know is that I'm called to pray by your spirit for them. So Lord, have your way over their life. And I'm very, very adamant about this because I was one of those people that there were those that said, get her out of your life. She doesn't stir the best out of you. She doesn't want the best for you. And guess what? They were absolutely correct. But in the meantime, there was someone, someone who prayed for me. We know that's Jesus, but someone agreed with him over my life. My parents did and and some a few others that did as well. And for that, those are things that God reminds me of his spirit that dwells within me is for a purpose. It's not just so that my so that my days are great and my days are better and that my life grows more blessed. But knowing that the greatest blessing is knowing who he is and knowing that he dwells within me. The greatest mystery, Christ himself dwelling within us, the hope of glory. So how do we stay in that place of knowing that Christ dwells within us? Well, it's just, it's a constant remembrance. How do we remember with grateful heart every single day being grateful, not just for what we have, but for who he is. And if you don't know who he is, this is the fun part. When you find out in the word, God, I'm thankful because you are majestic and you are holy and you are excellent and there's no one like you. When you begin to read those scriptures, you begin to, by faith, realize who he is and then proclaim it And then all of a sudden it goes into that thankful tank within your soul. And now you you begin to see, now you begin to see what you do have, who you have and who has you to where now you can see things from that place of heavenly wit, seeing mission fields in the midst of the battlefields. So I want to end with this today. Perspective will lead you one of two ways. It will either lead you to the reminder of who your great joy is, and that is God himself, or it will lead you to a place of great depression and ungrateful heart. So this is the time, as Christ lives in us, that we get to teach our souls, our mind, our will, and our emotions, even our bodies, because our bodies can even react to situations that we do not like. But now we begin to train them to say, God is for you, not against you. Thank you so much for joining me today on Let's Talk with Teresa and via Heavenly Wit Monday. If you really were encouraged by this show, I just pray more than anything, not even reaching out to me, but reach out to the Father reach out to him. Go after him all the days of your life. That's what this show is about. It's to point you back to him. It's to point you forward to him. It's to point you to the one and only God who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's Talk with Teresa Ann is all about bold inspiration, revealing God's goodness so that we can see with heavenly wit, seeing mission fields, in the midst 
of battlefields.